I grabbed a couple. Uh, I grabbed a sketch pad this morning from the art Ooh, okay. store. Get back into some uh, some drawing stuff. I re- always really enjoyed drawing when I was younger, mm-hmm. and then you know just became one of those things that didn't seem <laughs> seem worthwhile. Yeah, like there are so many things that I used to love doing, and then because I didn't feel like I was good enough, then I felt like I just had to give up entirely. Mm-hmm. Because so, there's no point in doing something if you're not the best at it, of course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like fucking ridiculous. Like and it's not I love to sing more. <laughs> yeah. I love to sing. I love to dance. I've I used to be super into art when I was younger too. And just so many different things, sports even, that I quit because I didn't think I was Mm -hmm. or like I knew I couldn't, you know, I knew I wasn't going to get a soccer scholarship. So eventually I quit because I thought I was good enough at playing the piano to get a piano scholarship. Funny that neither of those ended up happening. All, all of that. It was like, if it didn't, even just like, not being one of the better persons at something caused mm-hmm. me to avoid doing it. Okay. Am I good? Yeah, because my oh, ego wait, no, would get involved. Yeah. Sorry, I'm like <laughs> all over the place. I was listening to uh, High and Empowered with Oren and Julia mm-hmm. just before this. And, uh, um, was I that the first episode no that came out? What's that? Was that the first episode that came out? um that is their fourth episode my goodness i believe yeah mm-hmm. so that's dope yeah that's so cool having them on too like now i feel what <laughs> kind of what you and andrew or you and ray felt like when me and amanda joined it's like oh shit we got we got new voices in the chat and it's, it's cool it's cool to hear how people express things just a little bit differently for sure. But it's all like rotating around the same insights. It's just people translate it differently. Yeah. And it, it's actually helped me a lot, like having all like you and Amanda doing stuff and uh, Warren and Julia, just because it's made me realize how much just someone expressing whatever they're doing or going through or just expressing themselves, like that's all it is. You know, it's it's not about mm-hmm. saying the right words or doing the insightful stuff or oh. like sharing even something of, of value or feeling like you have to. Because I'll still, I'll resonate with like whatever I'm going through relative to what someone's saying, but it's kind of like the person, like it's helped me to realize how irrelevant I am in a lot of ways and like in like a good way you know kind of taking the pressure off in a lot of ways so yeah Yeah. it's like I'm nobody's listening um and being hypercritical of every single word that comes out of your mouth or like evaluating how insightful you are they're just like it's easier to give other people more grace I feel like so when you see other people in that same situation it's like okay well maybe I'm just making myself too important because nobody's actually nobody actually gives a fuck enough to judge me yeah like why would somebody take time out of their day I mean unless they're like really insecure and they're like projecting something on me which also has nothing to do with me Mm so yeah it's funny that I give a fuck (laughs) oh it's crazy and then you start seeing that with all all judgments just how much it's just someone judging something they would judge themselves for if they allowed themselves to do that so even like being really relaxed like if someone doesn't let themselves relax or they don't see value in it or they don't think it's important or it's too uncomfortable for them to relax and even just someone acting more relaxed expressing things in a more relaxed manner not taking themselves so seriously like they'll almost have to judge that just because they need a way to rationalize (laughs) why they uh why they don't act that way and that's been kind of wild because yeah just like realizing even just being relaxed can be a threat 
yeah sometimes it doesn't want to yeah so basically there's no way to avoid judgment people are going to judge you no matter what you're doing because they're perceiving you through the lens of their own judgment and as long as we're judging ourselves we're going to be judging everybody else and i'm still guilty of this too and i don't take my own judgment seriously so they're able to like you know the thought comes up and then i let that shit go pretty much immediately now but it's all still in there i won't say i'm above judgment everybody does it but like when you see how fickle almost your own judgment is or like how much it's really just shining a mirror back at yourself then you're like okay well we're all really just living in our own world so nobody actually knows me enough to judge me and even if they did that judgment should never be placed over my own experience because I can't even guarantee that other person really exists okay maybe that's a little woo woo but you get it <laughs> it's like we're so alone in our own consciousness and that can be depressing if you look at it from the perspective of being separate but it's like if you look at your consciousness as just the whole from your perspective right like your perception is all that exists to you and that's the same for everybody else and so we can take other people in general <laughs> less seriously but also ourselves and yeah um it's funny to realize how much shit i give myself just for no reason like my brain is just like looking for something to do oh god and and you almost like if you set yourself back or take a step back or whatever and see yourself as like you know the person that you judge is someone separate from you for example and you're judging a separate person it's almost like you start to realize oh wow this is a way that i would just judge someone else for doing these things like it's in there but i feel like i can get away with it because it's only to myself you know because it's the same sort of if i judge myself for acting certain ways saying certain things doing certain things then it's just me the same way I would judge anyone for doing those things. And it's almost like seems safer. And yet I receive all the consequences <laughs> of that, you know? So it's actually the most detrimental thing you can do. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't want to do that, then it's like, you're going to express that and, you know, judge other people especially if you feel like you're doing things correctly or well you almost have to by default judge other people too just yeah. because you're holding on to the good feelings about yourself yeah because all judgment is is just trying to boost yourself up above somebody else or even above yourself you know if you're judging yourself then you don't have to take ownership of the behavior that you're judging yourself for right because you can be like oh no that's not me like i i would act differently like why did i do that you know i don't i don't claim that but at the same time like you did it and refusing to take ownership is like the judgment is just kind of avoidance at the end of the day and it always has a consequence like you said like even judging other people in your mind like, even if you're not saying anything outward, um, the more that you reinforce that and believe that your judgment is somehow accurate, the more solidified that becomes in your experience. And then you kind of create this echo chamber in your own mind where you eventually convince yourself like the whole world thinks this way. And it's funny because like, that's just such a narrow perspective. And we can't see that because our lens of like our own perception is so fucking close. And it's just that willingness to question it a little bit that allows you to shift those things. But until then, it's like you're just 
reinforcing and building this like prison of your own self-judgment based on your own perceptions of things taken as truth. Crazy. Yeah. And I wonder how much that self-judgment is like almost stems from selfishness in a sense, like how you act and the way that you act. And because like our actions in so many ways reinforce our thoughts and then our thoughts shift our actions. And like, there's this sort of symbiotic <laughs> relationship that, you know, if you're thinking about, you, you almost have to think about yourself positively to try and mitigate your actions in a sense. And it's, that's why it's such a, such a toxic, sort of thing telling yourself a story because it's not matching with reality and and the more out of alignment you are with that it's like the bigger story you got to tell yourself the more bullshit you're doing the more selfishly you're acting it's like the more of a story you need in order to just feel better about the way the things that you're doing that like deep down the reality of you knows is off balance or you know not taking in all the considerations because even someone like you know um what's his name north korean guy kim yeah. Jong -un. yeah kim jong-un he probably like in order to act like that like deep down he's still you know reality mm -hmm. and so he has to do all of those things to counteract and like think about himself in a certain way, build himself up, create a world that kind of builds him up just to mitigate his own deep down sort of rationality or recognition that how he's acting is really fucked up, you know, and, and destructive in a lot of ways as opposed to constructive. And then when you are deep down, acting from that spot of like taking responsibility there isn't so much self-judgment anymore because it's kind of like it's like it goes hand in hand with that and we don't even realize because we think we're something separate from reality we don't even realize that because we don't want to look at that because we just want to you know feel better about the inherent sort of understanding that we're doing something not wrong, but, you know, out of alignment. Yeah, or like destructive or like divisive. Like we're doing something that's perpetuating and furthering division rather than like uh, acting from a place of unity, you know? So that's where cognitive dissonance comes in. That gap between what we need to believe about ourselves and what we're actually doing that's cognitive dissonance and it feels uncomfortable and in order to cope with that we distract ourselves we need to continue to tell ourselves some more and more grandiose story about ourselves and that's why kim jong-un can do all these atrocious things and like starve his people um because he has them all believing and so he can believe himself that he's some sort of like god or like above a human but you can't lie to yourself like that like he knows damn well he's just as immortal and vulnerable and similar to everybody else and so yeah that's when the posturing comes in that's when the inflated ego comes in and you kind of it's it's like a, a vicious cycle because once you start on that journey, like you have to keep feeding the idea of yourself with positive um, beliefs, whatever, perceptions. And the dissonance gets even stronger and the longer it goes on, the further it is, the harder it is to face it and see it for what it is and let it go because inevitable, there's an inevitable crash. And your ego takes a big bruise. And if you really think what you think about yourself is the reality of yourself, like that's, that's, that's like worse than death. 
is <laughs> like not being able to see yourself as better than everybody else. But you're right. Like we're all we're all just reality. We can't escape our contribution and the responsibility of that. So like I don't know. It's such a narrow perspective to just focus on feeling good about yourself while you're alive, like at the expense of everyone and everything around you. And that's why the world, some would say, is up in flames. And there's like more conflict than there's been, at least in my lifetime. Um, I can't say, you know, this is the the most tense the the world has ever been, because I don't think that's I mean, we can't say that with certainty, but we definitely could relax a little bit more and, you know, let, <laughs> I'll let go of our um, egos a little bit, get out, get down from our high horse, all of us collectively, and maybe we wouldn't be at, you know, the brink of a nuclear apocalypse, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, maybe we would realize that dropping atomic bombs or even continuing to build atomic bombs is just, it doesn't make sense in the slightest at all. <laughs> but like, we're just so caught up in this like world of perception and everybody's just so completely different. And that's why we can't level with each other. We We can't see each other as being the same thing because we need to hold on to our perceptions of ourselves and and the hierarchy that validates the way that we think and behave and move through the world because as long as we're doing that we don't have to look at all the people that we're hurting you know the way we're destroying the environment all of these things that like aren't pleasant to look at but are necessary to look at in over in order to like resolve any of it. Like it's not about pointing the finger at somebody else and saying you're the reason that this is happening, because all of us are playing a role in upholding the system as it currently is just by believing our thoughts, like at the root of it. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. they're all it's like it's like leaves on a tree, you know, all those things. The way that society runs the nuclear bombs war like people like a way to feel better about yourself almost is to assume that you know that all those things it's not like recognizing that they're fucked up and destructive there's nothing obviously wrong with that but people want to <laughs> focus on that as being the thing and it's like oh if we just change this if we just do this if we just do that then mm -hmm. it'll lead to like a different tree you know if we just change the leaves enough or snip this leaf or snip that leaf or you know contort this one or do this or that then it's going to change the tree but of course not the, the it's a different tree you know there's a different root but it's 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 like it's the same tree it's just starting to get watered with different a different type of water like it was getting like straight out of uh uh what's it called idiocracy they start watering plants with like a gatorade electrolyte type blend it's like right now we're watering life with gatorade electrolyte type blend and uh it's just a shift to watering it with actual actual water you know from it from itself and yeah it's because uh, all these things are a product of just trying to feel better about this assumption that we're separate, you know, about this assumption that I am what I think I am, but it's not just how we think, it's, it's how we act, you know, how do we act in response to that, you know, am I acting based on what I want? to do even that is like how you know aligned is that action with you like if you were out of the way if it wasn't so much about you how would you act instead of you know like if it wasn't about andrew or it wasn't about jackie 
you know, how would how would I act? How would I spend my day? And that almost shifts because like so much of the world right now is is what we do. You know, the things that we do are gonna give us, you know, happiness, joy, all this stuff that that we want. But really when the actions change and they're not so selfish anymore, it's like those things are just there like it's all on the table because you're not looking for it in a situation so it's actually allowed to be expressed through you and then it's like the reality of your experience right now can be that no matter what you do Mm -hmm. and that starts to shift and as long as you know that perspective is maintained like that state of being isn't maintained necessarily but it's like in an option because again like you said we can't we can't lie to ourselves yeah it's like just the shift from seeing yourself as separate and the purpose of existing to like build the idea of yourself as high as it could possibly get to like seeing yourself as just a piece of the whole and the purpose of existing is just to experience existing right so then like your your values completely change and that that shifts the way you act right like so much literally like pretty much everything we do in a day like that we see as like productive and valuable is completely fucking selfish like going to the gym to you know look a certain way or feel good about yourself and then you go to your job that most likely you chose based on you know how much money it's giving you or like the status of it everyone's trying to chase that next promotion you know more for me more for me and like participating in relationships with people that build us up right and um like not people that challenge us or are mean to us right like we we kind of filter our experience to make us feel good and build up the idea of ourselves and like that's our main priority rather than I don't know like almost putting yourself on the back burner and looking at like what actually matters and you know it's it's a very different way of thinking about life like rather than thinking about how can I live my best life and like I don't know based on the idea of what I think I want to like how can I live more of a life of service? And that's just like a question to keep in the back of your mind because it's not like a clear answer. And also you can get all like caught up in the idea of being a person who's selfless. And so that's another trap you can fall into. So it's like, it's like a balance because at once you are this little thing and all of it. And so both of those parts deserve an equal amount of attention but right now it's like really disproportionate uh, disproportionately like biased towards just ourselves and it doesn't even need to be like a huge shift like not every single person has to like give up everything and devote their life to saving the world right it's just about the little shift right like you mentioned the metaphor of the the tree and like we're focused on all the leaves, which we see as like the problems that we're dealing with in society. But like the real, the real thing is the root or yeah, like you said, what we're watering the tree with. And that's difficult to look at because everything is built on the perception that, you know, we're individual and that you know, life is about feeling good about yourself. And so it's very uncomfortable to look at the root. Um, but that looking at the root is just 
paying attention to what's going on in your immediate experience and how taking responsibility for how you're thinking about yourself, how you're behaving. And it's, that's how massive change happens is by each individual person, like just shifting their perspective a little bit. Because once your perspective shifts, everything else does too. Oh yeah. And uh, it's like, with that spectrum of like being feeling like a prisoner lost trapped all the you know ups and downs versus feeling free it's like it's almost like you don't have to do that but you're the one that's gonna suffer because of it it's like and then if you do it a little bit, suffer a little less. You do it a lot a bit, suffer a lot less. And it's like, it's almost, it's not that it's a guarantee. It's not that it's control. It's almost how much you're willing to let go. And this is admittedly this whole conversation of like <laughs> uncomfortable talking about it because I'm seeing all the ways that I'm still doing all this stuff. And so it's it's not like, and again, it's not beating yourself up about it because that's just, as you said, another avoidance tactic. Judging yourself for acting certain ways is just like a way of avoiding doing anything about it. And so, and that's why, you know, if you've ever seen a uh, movie, actually, very good movie, we did a movie review on it called Holy Man uh, with Eddie Murphy. And he has like, no belongings just kind of wanders around sees people in the street meets up with them hangs out like gets invited places because he's just like this super relaxed chill dude without a reason to to fear anything because he's not holding on to anything and he doesn't have belongings he doesn't have a place to live and so it's not to say that doing that gets you that but it's almost the product of like, you know, how much do you really need? Like, what are your things? Like, how much of what you have is a way to feel better about what's going on right now instead of just actually being involved and not needing anything? You know, like who has more, the man who has everything or the man who wants nothing mm -hmm. or woman? <laughs> but it's like, it is that spectrum and it's and so wherever you fall on that spectrum is kind of like indicative of a lot of ways of how your experience is going to be so it, it is just on us entirely on on me entirely to take that responsibility and it will inform my experience it doesn't you know guarantee anything but it is i think there is sort of a a spectrum that has like i don't know directly correlated in probably a lot of ways yeah i would agree and uh but at the same time there's no like arriving at complete mm -hmm. relaxation like that's the fluctuation is kind of just always going to be possible and you know, a normal part of this experience because you have to know what being really tense feels like, you know, to mm -hmm. know the value of relaxing. So, like, you can appreciate and learn from all aspects of the experience, and it's not about judging yourself for being tense because, yeah, that's just avoidance and that just keeps you there. That just, it's tensing up in response to tension, which doesn't make fucking sense but for some reason we think that's the answer um but yeah it has a direct influence on your experience and i think just recognizing that makes a huge difference like just rec recognizing that it that like it's your choice whether you want to let external circumstances influence the way you feel because I don't know, something I've recognized recently 
you know, I feel like I've been up and down like almost every other day. Right. Um, and the way that I look at different situations in my life is vastly different depending on how I'm feeling and, you know, the thoughts that I'm holding on to at any given moment. So that's when we realize that none of them are actually true. None of my perceptions are actually relevant. <laughs> like it's all just sort of up in the air and like I don't really know how things are playing out or why. And so the relaxation almost seems like the only thing that makes sense anymore. Like tensing up in response to uncomfortable emotions or situations like just makes them all that worse. And I'm realizing more and more that no matter what's going on, like I can relax through it. And that actually, that's what allows you to fall back into alignment with everything else that's going on. Um, and and you, there's the fear that when you let go and relax into whatever is happening, rather than stressing out and like feeling like you have to hop into action to fix everything, you feel like everything's going to fall apart and but that's actually the complete opposite like <laughs> i've found that the more that i've relaxed seemingly everything is falling into place in a way that i never would have guessed but that is like better than i could have imagined my life turning out and so that just reminds me that there's this like larger intelligence going on and me trying to think about and control my experience is what's pushing me out of alignment with that. But like, you're always tapped into that when you're relaxed. And so it's not, it's like you're, you're held at all times. And the, the perception that you're separate is what makes you feel so vulnerable. But when you take that a little bit less seriously, then you can just kind of lean into the flow of what's actually going on. And that's living in reality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's like being held is, is like you're holding yourself sort of because no one else is doing it. And it's like entirely up to you, the choices that you make, the things that you do. And like you don't even almost, at least I haven't even realized how many sort of pushes and pulls I've had throughout my life. And like, you know, always making decisions, you know, I'm the one making the decision, but how much someone else's point of view or perspective factored in to that decision and how much I've, I've always just craved like someone else saying something in response. Like I didn't even realize how much I, I did that because I used to recognize it a lot in someone, a, a close friend and it would be kind of funny because they would always want this like sort of immediate validation it's like that's a this is a this is a cool thing to wear right and just wanting that little bit there and so you can almost like fuck with them a little bit and uh and i always just turn it back to them it's uh and they're and i i'm just sort of starting to realize how much i i do that too and just because you don't it's like i don't want to do something wrong <laughs> but like you gotta do it's like there if there isn't anything wrong then just do it pay attention find out do it again pay attention find out and and then just that process over and over and and i probably discount like i've made plenty of decisions on my own but like Ah, I feel like there was always something. There was always some other like, well, let me just check how it's been done before. Or, hey, do you mind proofreading this? Or blah, 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 blah. Which isn't, I'm not saying those are bad things to do. Have someone check over like an important email or whatever. But there's there's a balance for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, I relate to that so much. Even like recently, I've been going through situations and I'll like, google exactly what i'm going through just yeah. to, to find out so what what some random stranger like did five years ago in the same situation random ass like, reddit thread 
exactly I think we can all relate to that of you know I I have actually just finished watching Fleabag and there's this one scene where like the main character goes to confession like in a Catholic church or whatever and she's like and she has this monologue um where she's like I just want someone to tell me what to do like tell me what to wear tell me where to work just tell me how to deal with all these situations in my life because like I I don't know when I'm scared and to me like that was just such a universal statement of you know we're all confused we all don't fucking know <laughs> and we just want to know so bad and our brain is like doing its best trying to figure out what the fuck is going on and it's just going to keep doing that but it's never going to get the answer and we're never actually going to have any real control over the way that our life is going the way we're perceived and that's difficult to let go and it's uncomfortable as far <laughs> um but yeah no I'm definitely guilty of deferring to like another opinion and even now like just wanting to have something to hold on to but I also recognize that the more I do that the more trapped and limited and I don't know uh small and and vulnerable I feel because if I give a fuck if other people think what I'm doing is cool or right or if they agree with it then then I'm giving my power away almost like and now now I I feel like I do this less like I'll get dressed without having to ask my friend you know like sending a picture to them being like is this cool to wear to the party yeah like what are you wearing I do that way less now I'm you know it's still in there but um it's yeah when you know that there's no right or wrong way and nobody else can possibly tell you because they're just as confused as you are then you're free to just figure out who you actually are and it's funny that the way that I am now is so vastly different than the way that I used to think about myself or like the idea of myself I used to hold on to. And I'm still the same me, right? And I've always just been this undefined piece of reality. <laughs> and I was, I've just been trying to cram myself into a box to feel safe my whole life. But um, everything feels a lot more expansive and colorful and vibrant when you say fuck that box right <laughs> just allow yourself to be this like wiggly free-flowing piece of reality that can't be defined or valued and yeah I guess we can pivot into the yoga that's one thing I love about the yoga practice is that it brings the attention back to you like how is your body feeling and you get to dictate that experience on your mat and and that's the value of yoga to me it taught me like oh shit I don't have to judge every single thing I do like I don't have to worry about doing shit right all the time I can just do things for the sake because it feels good right so and, and yeah with that being yeah. said we can hop in in a second but <laughs> no this is this is awesome this was uh yeah, a really good. Admittedly, I was like kind of a little bit uncomfortable getting on. I was like setting up my room for this and I was just like, oh man, we got like, not that I was like nervous to talk to you, but there was just like a lot of feelings of build up, And this was almost, it's starting to be more of an indicator for me when I'm going to have like a really cool conversation and chat. And I think this was, yeah, something, some clarity. I, I definitely definitely hit in this but a lot of it is like is like a baby bird jumping out of the nest and you know not knowing how to fly and then assuming that it should hold on to something it's like 
experience of flying is going to take take a sec but like assuming that you should keep holding on is like a bird who's learned how to fly almost thinking it, it'd be better better on the branch and it's like most of the world is perched up on a branch not wanting to not wanting to jump and fly <laughs> or learn yeah. to fly which i can imagine would be insanely frightening at first but that's exactly how you find your how you find your balance you know it's just doing it exactly we don't need to just keep stunting our own growth right because we'll know we know how to fly just like baby birds know how to fly like we know how to live in uncertainty because we've always done it and yet we still doubt ourselves and our ability to just cope with reality. Like we are way more intelligent and capable than we give ourselves credit for. So yeah, no, I feel the same way. Like I, whenever I have like a buildup of emotions or I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> it's always the fucking insightful ass conversation. And I'm, that just proves to me over and over again. Like, yeah, you don't actually know. So just show up. Yeah. Um shut up and keep moving. <laughs> all right. All right. Yogi Let's time. get it popping. <laughs> Let's go. All right.